league injuries. Who gets them, how do they happen, and what do we do about them? Hey everybody, Dr. Chris, orthopedic surgeon and sports medicine physician. Welcome to my channel, your favorite source for everything about broken bones and other injuries. Because you loved it so much the first time, and since you've been asking me to do it again, today we're gonna talk about injuries from the National Rugby League. Yes, we are talking about rugby injuries. So the first video here involves a player named Nene McDonald and he's from the Queensland Cowboys. So we can see from the video that Nene and another player from the Queensland Cowboys attempt to tackle a player who has the ball. Nene's teammate arrives at the player slightly before Nene and as he goes to tackle the player, we can see that his legs whip around into Nene's legs as Nene comes in slightly behind him. This causes Nene to fall off balance to his left hand side while his left foot is planted. As he's falling backwards, his body begins to externally rotate away from the planted foot. As Nene rolls onto his back, his left ankle is held at an awkward angle. His left foot and ankle are externally rotated by about, I don't know, 135 degrees from where they should be. And generally your ankle's not supposed to do that. So based on the video evidence, I would guess that he had suffered an ankle fracture dislocation. And when we check, this is exactly what he has suffered. Typically, this is an injury that we would treat with an open reduction and an internal fixation. In other words, we're gonna pull on his foot and ankle and put them back where they're supposed to be. Then, we're gonna open up the ankle and put some plate and screws to hold the bones in the position that they should be. Usually, this is going to require a plate and screws on the fibular side or on the side with the small bone, and it's gonna require at least two screws, if not also a small plate on the medial side or the side with the big bone. Interestingly enough, it looks like the player who caused the injury to Nene didn't get away scot-free. If you look at the end of the video, we can see that he injured his left arm as it became trapped between Nene and the player who they were tackling. So this next clip involves a player named Aiden Guerra from the Newcastle Knights. So in this clip, we can see that Aiden Guerra is breaking down or slowing down in an attempt to tackle a player who has the ball. As he is running in a direction perpendicular or across the face of the opponent who has the ball, he has to break down, in other words, decelerate while bending his knees and attempt to change direction at the same time. As a result of his speed, he overshoots the opponent running with the ball by a small amount. And when he reaches out with his arm to catch him, he ends up falling backwards to his right hand side. Unfortunately, his right foot is planted. And just like with the first case, when falling backwards while rotating on a planted foot, bad things are generally gonna happen at the level of the ankle. And once again, we can see here that the foot externally rotates approximately 90 to 120 degrees on the ankle. And as I told you before, it's not supposed to do that. And while his foot does not remain in that externally rotated position, we can see here that as he falls back, backwards that there is significant laxity or looseness at the level of the ankle and there is the general appearance that his foot is no longer properly connected to his leg at the level of the ankle. And while there are some cases of ankle fractures that can be treated non-operatively with cast immobilization, it is usually the case that we have to operate on these as I suggested with the first player. The next clip includes a player named Ryan James of the Gold Coast Titans. In this clip, we can see that James is decelerating in an attempt to break down and tackle an opponent who has the ball. As James is decelerating, the player with the ball falls in front of him, but to his left hand side. As James approaches, he plants his right foot to the side and then cuts away to the left we can see that his right leg goes into a very slight amount of dynamic valgus. And if you've watched any of my other videos on sports injuries or on ACL injuries, you know that dynamic valgus is a bad thing for the ACL. Ryan continues on to take two more steps before landing on the player who had the ball. But as he falls to the ground, we can see that immediately he rolls over and starts grasping at his right knee. 
Based on the injury mechanism, I would call this a rupture of the anterior cruciate ligament plus or minus the medial collateral ligament until proven otherwise. And when we check to see what injury he actually suffered, we find that it was indeed an anterior cruciate ligament rupture. For more information on how we diagnose, treat, and rehabilitate this injury, check out my video, How Not to Tear Your ACL. I'll leave a link in the description down below. For this next one, we have a player named Daniel Tupu from the Sydney Roosters. In this clip, we can see that Daniel is in pursuit of another player who has the ball. As Daniel begins his tackle, the player with the ball decelerates and then falls to the ground. This causes Daniel to suddenly change direction and then also fall to the ground. And as the play is ending, we can see that Daniel is on his back, grasping towards his right shoulder. Although we can see this injury from two different views, it's still not exactly clear as to what he may have suffered. But there are a number of possibilities based on the movement that he was performing at the time that he was injured. The three structures that come to mind are an injury to the biceps, an injury to the pectoralis major muscle, or an injury to the shoulder itself, such as a dislocation. When I look at Daniel laying on the ground, I can see that the contour of his bicep appears to be normal. So although an injury to the long head of the biceps tendon is a possibility, I consider this to be a less likely scenario. I can also see from the appearance of his shoulders relative to one another, that the relative height of the right shoulder has been maintained when compared to the left. Also, the overall contour of the right shoulder when compared to the left is approximately the same. So this leads me to believe that his right shoulder is not presently dislocated. And although it's a possibility that his shoulder may have dislocated and then spontaneously reduced itself or only partially dislocated, in other words, sublux, and then reduced itself. The position of his shoulder while he is laying on the ground leads me to believe that dislocation is probably not the culprit either. And when we see him at the end of the clip, we can see that he is pointed to a location on the upper aspect of his right arm, which is exactly the same location where the tendon from the pectoralis major muscle inserts. The pectoralis is a large muscle on your chest which basically makes up most of the mass of the breast tissue in males. The role of the pectoralis muscle is to adduct the arm, or in other words, bring the arm close to the midline of your body. And that's exactly what Daniel Tupu was trying to do when he was tackling the opposing player. Unfortunately, because the opposing player stopped and fell to the ground, Daniel Tupu's right arm was forced into abduction while the muscle was attempting to contract. Further research confirmed that Daniel Tupu had in fact suffered a rupture of his right pectoralis major muscle. This is typically an injury that will require operative fixation. And in the case where the tendon has been ripped off of the bone, we will perform a suture anchor refixation of the tendon back to the bone. Basically, we make an incision here at the axilla and we stick a couple of screws that have sutures attached to them, which we sew through the tendon and we reattach it to the bone. And if you're wondering, the axilla is the armpit. This next one involves a player named Cooper Cronk. Yes, that is his real name, from the Sydney Roosters. And in this clip, we actually have a player Funny. who is getting tackled of slamming gets injured, as opposed to the player who is doing the tackling for a change. So we can see in this clip here that Cooper Cronk has the ball the leg, and the he is right kicking the ball away. Right. And unfortunately for Cooper, that just as he kicks the ball away, he, he gets tackled by an opposing tackle player. Blood. And not only is Cooper Cronk tackled by the opposing player, we can see that he is he also unceremoniously the blood, slammed to the ground. Okay. And wouldn't you know that the player that slams to the ground has been nicknamed Slamming Sam for exactly that reason. At any rate, the we can body. see that Cooper is directly slammed slam. onto his back with the point of impact being his left this shoulder slamming blade. Sand. And we can see that I immediately after the impact, he is grasping at his left shoulder. The shoulder blade is a flat bone which is located on the upper back. You have one on each side. It is the bone to which the cup of your shoulder and the acromion connect. The bone is triangular shaped and relatively flat and it is not that resistant to impact. So based on the injury mechanism, 
I would predict that Cooper suffered a fracture of his scapula or a fracture of his shoulder blade. And that's exactly what he ended up having. The optimal treatment for this injury usually depends on the severity of the fracture and whether or not there are any associated injuries. Since an injury to the scapula is associated with blunt force trauma, there are usually other associated injuries, including injuries to your ribs and or the lungs contained within. Because the scapula is surrounded by muscle on both the front and the back side, in most cases, scapula fractures can be treated non-operatively. In some cases, when there is significant displacement of the fracture fragments, in other words, the pieces are really far from one another, we may perform operative fixation with plate and screws. Here, the injury occurred one week prior to the National Rugby League Grand Final. Now, the Grand Final is like the Super Bowl of NRL Rugby. This is a big deal. No, Cooper Cronk did not take six to eight weeks off to allow this scapula fracture to heal. Yes, Cooper Cronk played in the NRL Grand Final one week after having suffered a scapula fracture. That is freaking tough as nails. I cannot believe that he did that. So for this last clip, we have a player named Tyson Frizzell of the Illawarra Dragons. And in this clip, we can see that Tyson is running downfield attempting to tackle a player who is about to catch a kickoff. The player who is catching the ball falls to his left-hand side at the same moment that Tyson is sliding in for the collision. And unfortunately for Tyson, that means that his groin is connecting with the other player's knee. And we can see from the slow-mo replay that all of Tyson's momentum basically comes to a dead stop on the point of impact, which is the knee, which has just struck him in the groin, which doesn't sound like it's gonna end well for Tyson, I don't think. Tyson rolls onto his back before he has even stopped moving that already he is grimacing. And although I am normally reporting to you orthopedic and sports medicine related injuries, this appears as though it will be an injury of a urologic nature. Now, it's not entirely clear what injury he has suffered here, but there's really not that much that's located in this area to become injured. First, from an orthopedic perspective, it is possible that he could have suffered a contusion or possibly even a fracture of his pubic rami. In other words, the bones that join your pelvis in the front as a result of the contact with the knee while the opposing player's foot was planted on the ground but there's a lot of soft tissue in front of the pubic rami, and that includes both the penis and unfortunately the testes. And judging by the look on his face, I would say it was probably one or both of the above. Looking at the press report afterwards, it was stated that Tyson Frizzell had suffered a ruptured testicle. Typically, this is an injury that will require operative repair of the testes, and that's exactly what Tyson had shortly after this injury occurred. And although rugby is a beloved sport of many, we can see here that it is not always fun and games. So thanks for watching another Dr. Chris video. Today we've been talking about NRL rugby injuries. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, that's been a word from Dr. Chris, not your everyday or so. Just a flesh wound.